driver's license online. That's mainly what I work on. So we're a pretty small company, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, so there's only about 140 employees in the entire company, uh, but we've been growing popularity the past years. So that's, that's kind of nice, <laughs> uh, getting more clients in different states. Uh, so to give you an overview of what languages and technologies we use at work or what I use, I mainly use Java and Clojure. And then on our team, we also use SQL for database things. Uh, and front end people use React, but I haven't actually used this at all because I haven't worked with that very much. Um, I know Brian asked me to talk about my, my expectations versus reality. I definitely did not expect to use Clojure. If you don't know, Clojure is like a list type language. If you've taken programming languages, it's kind of similar to Racket, I think is what we use in programming languages. So that's that's something. I'm glad we I'm glad we had that in programming languages. So I I could at least have an idea <laughs> of what was going on with functional type languages. I'll give an overview of my resume whenever I applied to this job. So I interned at Cerner uh, summer of 2020. I did an REU at NC State in summer of 2019. I was an undergraduate TA for web dev or whatever it's called now. Uh, I was a math and CS tutor for most of my time at school. And I did a couple of independent researches with under professors. I definitely recommend doing that even if you aren't able to get internships, having those kind of independent researches uh, during the semester under a professor are really nice. I, I'm really glad our uh, university allowed us to do that. Uh, so the interview process for pay it was was kind of lengthy, a little bit more lengthy than some other interview processes I've had. But all of them follow this general process, where initially you have a phone interview with an HR person where they just ask you general questions. After that, there's a coding exam online. You don't talk to any, any interviewers here. This was just a coding inter like yeah coding exam. They just have maybe three or four questions in Java and SQL was for what it was for me. Um, after that, there's like a technical questions interview. There's no coding in this one. They just ask you questions like uh, they asked me what polymorphism was, stuff like that. <laughs> uh, technical coding interview was the next one. And this was the actual coding. They give you like programming problem and then you have to code it live in front of them and talk through your process. And then they'll have a non-technical interview where they just give you different situations you might run into like, oh no, what would you do if you aren't getting along with a coworker? How would you handle that situation? And then uh, they also had another final interview where they just talked to me again, asked me a few more technical questions and some more situations that I might run into and just generally getting a vibe check to see how you might fit with the company. Um, my interview for Cerner as well was a little bit similar to this. So they usually have yeah, a phone interview, at least a phone interview, a technical coding interview, and a non-technical interview. There's usually at least three. Um, so for me, I knew that the uh, interview, the coding exam was going to be on hacker rank. So I just did a bunch of hacker rank problems for Java and SQL. That way I knew the environment that I was going to be working on. Um, that, that's all I did. I, <laughs> I, I probably could have prepared more, but it really wasn't that bad. Um, to give some general interview advice, because I, I have interviewed with it, a good number of companies. I'd say that for small and medium sized companies, they usually tend to focus more on data structures, knowledge. Like, do you know your data structure as well? Do you know, do you know what polymorphism is? Do you know how to make data structure objects, stuff like that. Do you know object-oriented programming? For larger like FANG companies, if you're trying to apply to like Apple or Facebook, they tend to focus more on algorithms. From my experience anyway, they might give you some random algorithm problem and be like, find the big O of your algorithm. Now make it more efficient. What's the most efficient way you can do this? Um, and then also just general advice, if you don't know what to do during an interview, just ask questions about the problem, because uh, that's that's really the best way to go about that. And it buys you a little more time, even if you don't actually need the, the answer to the question. <laughs> uh, just buys you some time to think about what you're doing, and, and you'll be fine. Um, that, that's it. That's all I have prepared. Uh, 
any any questions? I have a question. Yeah. How did you find uh, your job? Yeah. So actually, I I will I will tell a story about how I got laid off from my job at Cerner and why none of you should apply to Cerner because I think they are probably not going to last very long. But I, I had initially, I interned at Cerner in summer of 2020 and they gave me an offer for a full-time position and I took the offer. And then like a month before I was about to start, they were like, just kidding. We're laying you off before you start, bye. And so I had to try to quickly find another position. Uh, the way that I found this one was a friend of mine knew that I had gotten laid off and they saw this position on LinkedIn and they were like, hey, maybe you should apply to this. Um, that That's it. And then I, I just reached out to the HR person and I was able to get an interview and was luckily able to get a job there. So, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Thanks. How long did the interview process take? Yeah, so let me go back to these slides. Each of these were about an hour long. Each of these steps were an hour. Um, so it was a pretty lengthy, lengthy interview process. The phone interview was maybe a little bit shorter, like 30 minutes, but the rest of them were an hour. Uh, I think the coding exam was 90 minutes, and then all of the other ones were an hour each. And so were they on separate days? I had the two technical ones on one day, like the technical questions and the technical coding one after on one day. I had the non-technical one after that the following day. And then I had the final interview the following week. So it, I, I guess they were mostly on different days except for the two technical ones were on the same day, like back to back. And that was like two hours. But it was with different different interviewers, so. Sarah, now that you've been hired, did they have you ever asked if they like how many people they interviewed for your position? And how many like competitors you I, had? I didn't ask. <laughs> I've no, That's I okay. no yeah, idea. I was just kind of curious. Yeah. So from the time you first contacted HR until you started to work, how long was that? It did take a while. I would say like a month. Mm -hmm. Just because I had to, yeah, first reach out to them and then get all the interviews scheduled and then have the interviews and then I had to wait a while before they got back to me. And then I started maybe a week or two after I accepted. You know, if, how do you remember how long it was between your last interview and when they contacted you? A lot of people have asked me that question for future job prospects. Yeah, generally from my experience it'll take one to two weeks um but some some companies take longer and that's usually because they want to finish out they have like different rounds of hiring people is how this usually works so a lot of times they might want to wait until they've interviewed everybody and then they reach out to specific people at the end of that pool of interviewees um so I wouldn't worry too much if people are taking a long time to get back to you, but smaller to medium sized companies are more likely to get back to you sooner rather than later. Um, the fame companies can take a while. So I have a question, like, it seems like you kind of did the opposite of me. You did an REU one summer and then an internship the next summer, and then you decided to go into industry instead of going to grad school and where I did the opposite. So why did you just, choose to go into industry instead of grad school or was it really like a, a conscious choice or yeah i mean i'm not against maybe going to grad school later i honestly just wanted a little bit of a break from academia i was getting a little burnt out from school so i was like i think that going into work could be a nice change of pace um i, I kind of enjoyed the stricter lines between when you're working, like the working time and the not working time, uh, and that was kind of pretty appealing to me. So uh, that that's really that's really why. I'm not sure how long I'll stay in industry or what I'll be doing in the next few years from now, but yeah, I, I think pretty short term. I think <laughs> so. So out of all those activities that you did during 
your time here in that one slide, what would you say like prepared you the most for your professional career? Like what I did in school. <laughs> yeah, like you said you did like you were a oh, teacher. Oh, you're talking about my yeah. uh, this. Uh, yeah. Um, or, or none of those is OK. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm not sure. I think that all of your experiences in school or whatever other experiences you have outside of school, programming competitions, game jam, stuff like that, anything you do is going to help you. But whenever you actually start an industry, it's a little bit different from like projects in school, but also kind of similar. Uh, but I, I don't think you can fully be like, oh yeah, I'm fully prepared. I know exactly what I'm going to go into. Like, I, I'm like, for instance, I never expected to use closure. Like I didn't even know that we used that because throughout my entire interview process, I had only done things in Java and SQL. So, but then when I got to the job, they were like, oh, actually we need you to write a bunch of code in closure. So you, you never, you can never really be fully prepared, but I think as long as you are willing to learn and adapt, then you'll be fine. Um, I think that's the best thing you can learn from school anyway, uh, at least in CS <laughs> is, yeah. Did they have some kind of training for closure or do you just have to learn on your own? Um, they gave me a like, I think they gave me a book and they were like, you can do some practice problems from the book and then we'll give you your actual assignment. And they gave me, they gave me like a week to do that because they asked me, they were like, have you worked with a language like this before? And I was like, oh, I've worked with, with some functional languages. Uh, and they were like, okay, so, you know, we'll just give you a week to do this. And then I was like, okay, it, it turned out okay. Um, I, yeah, I, I think as long as you, you know, throughout school, you learn different languages anyway. So I think after you take your programming languages class, you'll be pretty ready to attack other languages if you have them thrown at you. So you don't need to worry too much. That's, that was my experience in learning um, functional programming. I showed up at my job at JPL and they said, oh, by the way, you're going to be programming in Lisp. And I was like, what's that? And they said, well, here's a book. <laughs> <laughs> Literally the same. Um, OK, well, I guess whoever wants to go next, they can go next unless people have other questions. Uh, you can feel free to like message me or email me as well if you want. I, I'm always available. Thank you, Sarah. That was really yeah. interesting. That was really, really good, Sarah. Gee, thank I'm you. So <laughs> glad you landed on your feet there after getting <laughs> close by Yeah, her. definitely. Um, I, I have one last question for Sarah that I just thought of. How yeah. many hours a week do you work? I I work about forty hours a week, but some weeks I work more than forty hours a week, like maybe fifty. It depends on if we have like a tight deadline coming up because the client that we work for can be kind of uh, nitpicky about, oh, you have to get things done at this exact day. So then sometimes we might have to work a little bit over time. But for the most part, I think I can work about 40 hours a week and be just yeah. fine. So. Cool. Um, I guess I can go next. Uh, I don't I didn't make slides. Um, I, I do have some notes, though, <laughs> that I'll sort of read off of and, and just talk about and I figured I don't know exactly what people want to know, so I'll let you guys ask questions too, of course. So uh, yeah, so I'm Carter. Um, I think I know a lot of people here. But um, anyway, um, I'm from Springfield, uh, and I graduated from Drury in 2020. Uh, my major was computer science, and my minor was math, which has really come in handy, and I'll mention that <laughs> later. Um, but. Uh, so as far as like what I did while I was at Drury, the summer after my sophomore year, I did an internship uh, also at Cerner, like Sarah. Um, uh, and then the summer after that, the summer after my junior year, I, well, so I, so then after that, I applied to both uh, like other internships and REUs, and I ended up just deciding on an REU, which I got, um, which was at Mizzou. 
um, and that's like just a research experience for undergraduates uh, if you don't know but uh, it's basically like just doing research at, at another school um, over the summer um, so then after that I, I sort of decided that I thought I wanted to do grad school more than go into industry um, and I sort of had a few reasons um, one reason was just that like research seemed more interesting and sort of like engaging than like uh, doing development. And I sort of, all I had to base that off of was like Cerner versus Mizzou. Um, just basically the work that I did at uh, Mizzou, I just thought was more interesting. Um, and I thought maybe like, that's just more like what I'd want to do like as a career, like is more uh, more research focused things. Um, and I liked, I sort of liked the environment at, at Mizzou or just like at, at universities in general better than uh, at, a, at a company or a large company like Cerner. I think that definitely doesn't, uh, I think like small companies maybe have a, you know, have a different environment. So that might not always apply necessarily. But um, for me, I just, it just felt more comfortable and felt more like uh, where I wanted to be. Um, and also like, as far as like why I decided I want to do a PhD instead of a master's, for one thing, PhDs are pretty much always like fully funded, which means that uh, the university will like, they'll, they'll pay you a stipend, which is pretty much like a salary. Um, and uh, and you don't have to pay for anything. Like I, I, have, I have to pay $500 a semester in segregated fees, which is kind of silly because like <laughs> I have to pay it uh, and also they pay me. So it's kind of like my employer pays me and then I have to pay them back every semester. It's like, why don't you just not pay me that amount anyway? Um, <laughs> so basically like, you know, I, I get a stipend um, and then I pay a tiny bit each semester. Um, uh, masters that's like less common that they're fully funded but it's still possible actually here at University of Wisconsin um, where I am going to grad school it's kind of like the exception to that uh, that masters can also be fully funded here actually if you get into the master's program it is fully funded there's also a professional masters that's not but um, so so that's kind of the exception but if you apply if you're like a Applying to PhDs, you can like note that it'll be fully funded and then uh, you can always leave with your master's, which is kind of taboo sometimes. Um, but it is nice if you go to a school like here, which master's can also be fully funded. It's not taboo to leave with your master's if you get a PhD because they would have been fully funded anyway. Um, anyway, that was maybe a, <laughs> a, a rabbit hole that I went down. Um, Anyway, so, uh, and then lastly, uh, I think, oh no, I already said this, Never mind. Or, oh, right, okay, no, I didn't wanna say, um, so PhDs kind of set you up better for like a more research oriented job. Um, masters, like you can still kind of do like a more research oriented job with them. But um, I think if, if you're thinking about like going to grad school and maybe doing a masters, that should be maybe like just to sort of like try to get into like a slightly above entry level, like something like a more data science um, developer job or like a, a machine, machine learning. Um, like developer type of job um, that can sort of help you like get straight into those positions after you get a master's degree. Um, but if you wanna do like, just like pure research, maybe think about a PhD. Um, so as far as like the application process, uh, I applied to only six schools, which is like maybe a little bit low. Um, I think the reason that I only did six um, is because I, after doing the REU at Mizzou, I kind of was like guaranteed uh, entry into there. Like they kind of let me know early um, so that was sort of my fallback. So I didn't really have to apply to any other like safe schools um, since Mizzou was kind of like the ideal safe school for me. So, so that worked out kind of nice. Um, uh, so then I got to apply to, to like five other schools that were sort of like each like kind of a reach to get into. Um, so, and of course I, and I, I ended up out of those five, UW is the only one that I got into. So I went here, um, but I'm really happy with it here. I like it a lot. Um, maybe some like things to kind of think about like if you're thinking about selecting schools uh it's like good to look for faculty that sort of work in your area of, of interest um, but also like understand that you probably don't know exactly what your area of interest is like once you get in um, and start you know switching when start learning more things and interacting with people maybe that'll change and things like that um, but, but it's good to like sort of have people in that area just so that you have somewhere to start um, and you can talk about them in your application and sort of say like, I'd like to work with these people on these projects. Um, and then uh, let's see, what else did I say? 
uh, yeah, apply to some reach schools and some safe schools. Um, so you have a fallback if you don't get into any of the reach schools. Or maybe you say, I only want to go to grad school if I can get into this like really good school, then I guess you could do that. But that seems a little silly. Um, <laughs> I think you should probably decide grad school or industry and not make it dependent on, on the school you get into. Um, and, and I think the location like does matter somewhat. Like people try to say probably like that you should just go to the school, not like the city, but like, especially if you're doing a PhD, you're gonna be there like five, six, maybe seven years. Uh, I think you should go somewhere that, that, you, wanna, that you wanna be for that long. Um, and so then after I applied, I heard back from, so I had heard back from Mizzou pretty early on and then I heard back from UW in January and I got to visit uh, in February. There was no interview or anything. It was just I sent in the applications. Uh, same with every school. Well, I didn't get into the other ones, so maybe that's why there wasn't an interview. <laughs> but uh, the, even for UW, there's no like interview. They just sort of like admitted me based on my application. Um, and like at most schools, there's not really a point in like reaching out to professors. Like if you want to go there, like some 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 people say to do this, and like I think it applies to some. Uh, areas some fields more than others but there's really no point in like a uh, messaging professor saying hey i'd like to work with you because they they can't really help you get in uh, <laughs> for the most part um, maybe not at like a smaller school um, maybe that's an exception or if you sort of have some personal connection to the professor maybe you know or some existing connection through an ru or somebody knows somebody but just in general uh, probably not worth it um, to do that um, and like check their websites and like see sometimes professors will have things to say about that. Um, so anyway, so since I've now that that I've been here um, the past like year and a half, this is my second year fall semester. Um, so I take like just sort of like what my normal semester or day looks like. So I'm taking two classes a semester. So like only six credit hours. Um, the classes are which, which is standard like it's normal like that's like a six credit hours, you have to take at least six. Um, you could take like nine, but most people would recommend not to because it's just like a lot on top of all your other responsibilities. Um, the right classes now, are the classes are definitely uh, harder than normal or than normal, <laughs> harder than okay. they were at jury. Um, but they're, you know, I'm only taking two. So it's sort of the overall course load is maybe similar. Um, I think that comes from like these just being grad level classes compared to undergrad ones. Um, they're just more difficult. Um, let's see. Uh, I've also the last two semesters I've also like been doing research. Uh, so I like just working individually with a professor, and I take I take like credit hours for those, but it's mostly just to like get going on research and move into a, an RA position, a research assistantship position soon. Um, because right now I'm uh, I'm a teaching assistant, so the last three semesters I've TA'd for a class, um, and just like run labs, hosted office hours, graded assignments, and managed students and things, um, and also like come up with new assignments and things like that. Um, so that's sort of how like I'm funded. So like I'm expected to be a TA, or I'm guaranteed a position as a TA um, for as long as I'm here. But practically speaking, to graduate, you're going to have to move on to an RA at some point, so you can have more time to focus on research and like actually do your dissertation and thesis and things. Um, let's see, I, I, won't, I, I don't have to talk about like the research itself right now, but if anybody has questions, I can. Um, and I, I've managed to like, I've managed to stick to working about like 40 hours a week, um, which like people kind of, I, I don't know, I think people have an expectation that you're gonna have to work more. Uh, so far it's been okay. I think I'm pretty like disciplined with my time as far as like I get up at eight and you know try to work like nine to five or six or so um, most days. So I, you know, I've managed to like get by without like working a lot of extra time, which is kind of important to me. Um, so maybe I think like, you know, it's possible at least so far, uh, I'm sure at some point I'll have to work more in some weeks I've had to like before submitting a paper or something. But uh, for the most part, the workload isn't too bad. Um, but it, but it's all self-directed, so you need to be self-motivated, I think. Um, and and then like just the, the one last thing is like the things that I wish I knew or that were like different than my expectations. Um, one thing uh, is that there's like a lot of math. Uh, <laughs> like I've just encountered like okay, so I've taken six courses, right, three semesters, and uh, of those six, 
So four of them had like a lot of upper level math. Um, and I, it's not like I'm seeking out math courses. Like the, I'm just taking interesting courses. Like the, the, upper, the ones that had math were like graphics, uh, machine learning, obviously, but you know, machine learning, graphics, uh, optimization, and some other one uh, <laughs> that I can't even remember. The, oh, computer vision. Like they're not necessarily like math classes right like they're computer science classes but like just the math shows up in so many places like mostly a lot of linear algebra um, and also some like calculus as well um, but basically like if you're thinking about going to grad school you should be ready for that or like uh, at least be okay with it like um, I'm definitely okay with it but I didn't realize going in how much it would be that it's it feels like I'm sort of doing more math than I'm definitely doing more math than programming um, like on a daily basis um, uh, over the course of the of the whole time I've been here. Um, yeah, and, and a, another thing is that there are a lot of people, at least here, I don't know how this applies to other universities, but at least here that are from non-computer science backgrounds. So like, of like my four sort of closest friends, like only one of them is a computer science, it was a computer science major in undergrad. The others were like biology, uh, applied math, and chemistry, I think. And so it's like, so there's, so sort of like your, sort of the things that you learn in undergrad, like the programming and things, those I think come in handy and they help a lot. Um, just sort of already knowing those things, but you, I found that I'm sort of like building new skills rather than like continuing to expand on the programming skills mostly, like just as far as the coursework and things, like I said, a lot of like math and uh, just like, um, you know, learning about like conducting research and literature and things like that. Um, yeah, and then uh, I guess one the last thing was uh, that I that I wish I knew, or the, just that I that's different than I thought. It's just there are just like so many so many things, so many subjects and like sub areas that I've spent a lot of time like learning about or taking courses over that I just hadn't even heard of uh, <laughs> going in, um, which is I think normal. It's just like there's just a lot out there, and so don't expect grad school to just be like a continuation of what you've been doing. Um, it's it's like learning a lot of new things and like you sort of have to be ready and willing to like shift to completely new uh, sort of subjects that you'd never really thought of still you know within computer science or math but just sort of whole new things so um, yeah that's all that took longer than I thought to say all that but <laughs> uh, before we get started on questions would you guys want to move to the other zoom room because yeah. we have two minutes here. Yeah, I was just we have about to, to say that. <laughs> there's not a password or anything, is there? I can just click on it. I, I don't think there should be. I didn't. Okay. I just use the default settings, so. Okay. Um, but it's in the chat anyway. So I'm going to stop this and.